Neil, would you get the door, please? Trick or treat. Don and Emily, come on in. Hi. Hey guys, we're just about to take the show. You want to join us? Welcome to CCMO Access, the program that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students at CCM, members of the community, people doing good things. I am your host, Anil Barkov, and we are coming to you from the Media Center at the CCM campus. Our guest this evening comes to us from the CCM Campus Life office, Mr. Don Phelps and Ms. Emily Herrera. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi. Um, so you are both a part of the student government here at CCM, correct? Yes. Correct. Um, can you tell us uh, about student government? What are some of the things that you guys do on campus? Uh, yeah, so student government, we basically try to give a, um, <laughs> we just try to improve student life mm -hmm. here on campus. And since we're not a, um, s a campus where you can stay here, um, we just try to get you more involved mm -hmm. in campus life and uh, try to have you stick around as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And the Student Government Association helps the students get their issues th to the administration on campus. Mm -hmm. So they serve on various governance committees and report issues and you know they'll shine a light on an issue, try to get things improved on campus from the student perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emily, I understand you are the president of the government, correct? Yes, yes. 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 Um, how long have you been in that position? Do you mind telling us a little bit um, about it? Since April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since April. Um, before my first year, I signed up to be secretary, mm -hmm. and there I got a nice feel of um, student government as a whole, and from there on I, I uh, <laughs> decided to move up, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And uh, uh, Don, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the student government? Sure, I serve as the advisor, so I've been the mm -hmm. advisor for 17 years, oh, so wow. for quite a while, and I've worked with student governments before that and mm -hmm. other jobs as well. So it's a great job. Mm -hmm. um, now, if a student was, um, like, can you tell us about how many students are involved in student government and how students can get involved in it? Yeah, uh, currently we have four students. Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely looking for more um, participants, mm -hmm. more people to sign up. Um, normally we would have a, a whole voter registration and have people sign up and this would be around April. Mm -hmm. um, that's where people would get elected, and um, and then since we don't have enough people, mm -hmm. <laughs> or we're shorthanded, uh, this year we decided to just have people come in, um, try to get the word out, and have people join us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very rarely is the student government all the spots full. So there's mm -hmm. 21 available positions, oh, wow. and I can't say I've ever seen all 21 full. You know, people are coming and going all the time. So it's an application process. The students that are interested apply. They meet with the nomination committee. They make sure they're mm -hmm. serious about the position and aware of, you know, the job they're taking on. And then they get appointed by the student government. Um, can you tell us about some of the positions that students can apply for to be in, in, the, gov in the government? Sure, there's an exec board, so there's a bunch of positions on the exec board. There's Emily as president, <laughs> vice president, secretary, treasurer, and then there's the interclub council chairperson, and that's a position that works with all the clubs and organizations on campus, both the okay. existing clubs and then also helps to bring new clubs on campus because mm -hmm. you know, all new clubs have to be chartered by the Student Government Association. Oh, okay. And then there's, I guess, 17 senators on campus. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. at least there are 20 something senators on campus, and they serve on the governance committee. So there's college council, and then there's six standing committees a mm -hmm. safety committee, a accessibility awareness committee, a student affairs committee, curriculum committee, oh, academic wow. standards, and they serve on those committees. 
you know, some as voting representatives, some just representing the students. Mm -hmm. So students can actually get very involved into campus life. It's just not many have come out so far to be in the student government yet, correct? Correct, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. We're still recruiting for oh. positions. Now, um, I know you said you were secretary. I was actually going to ask <laughs> if you had a position <laughs> beforehand. Um, what does the secretary do specifically? Because I know they deal with finances and money, but what would you do for the student government? Uh, specifically, I would, during our meetings, I would take notes, take mm -hmm. times. Um, I would take count of attendance mm -hmm. um, anytime there was any kind of voting. Mm -hmm. um, I would take count of who voted and how many um, votes were in total. Mm -hmm. um, I would also make, at the time, the current president had me do the agenda mm -hmm. and um, I'd also print out and have my own notes for everyone to see at the or next meeting, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the secretary takes the minutes for the meetings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reports them back at the next meeting and then the okay. whole group votes to say, yep, that's the official mm -hmm. record of the meeting. Yeah. So uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about your responsibilities as president this time around? As president, it's a lot more, definitely. <laughs> um, sure. I have to communicate with everyone that's a part of SGA, even um, head members of other clubs and faculty, I have to communicate and just try to get as much of SGA out there and mm -hmm. bring back as much as I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the great jobs that student government has at County College of Morris is gets to one of the governance committees called College Council. Mm -hmm. And the SGA gets uh, is an agenda item on that meeting. And uh, when we talk to other SGAs, they are so jealous that our president has the opportunity to address the president, the cabinet, faculty, staff oh, wow. at this monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. So it, it's quite an opportunity because not, you know, not every school gives their mm -hmm. student government that kind of visibility where the, the SGA president can basically say whatever they want in front of this, you know, pretty esteemed board, so. So you have a lot of power here at CCM, it seems <laughs> That's like. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, do you enjoy being president? Do you find it's, I know you said it is a lot of work and it's very difficult, and uh, specifically at CCM, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, um, about how it's for students, it's kind of hard, specifically at community colleges, getting into certain aspects of, you know, student life here. Um, uh, was it hard for you getting involved in student government when you first did? Um, well, my, I actually had siblings in the past oh, come wow. to C CCM, mm -hmm. and I had a brother who was even president. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, okay. Point. Yeah, so he was definitely pushing me towards <laughs> <laughs> joining. And um, the first meeting, I remember just feeling really into the entire, like, vibe and mm -hmm. just wanting to help out because my first couple of weeks at CCM were just, they were great. People wanted me to join clubs. I made friends mm -hmm. of like right away, and faculty was so nice. Like it was, it was really great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think students are really surprised that they can jump right in, and there's mm -hmm. positions available. They don't have to be here for a year before you can apply. Mm -hmm. You know, they can jump. I'm a little right curious in. <laughs> about jumping in as well because there's. Uh, I know I'm definitely not the best with uh, a lot of logistical things, but I do really want to get involved in clubs and activities here on campus. And uh, I know it was a little bit difficult for me when I first came in here. It's kind of the stigma around community colleges, and I guess it's a mentality that I had. But from what you're telling me, this sounds like a very, very interesting. It's been like I don't want to say club, but a very interesting aspect of CCM that other schools don't really have to this extent that we have it here. So um, can you uh, tell us more how about, how, can you tell us a little bit about how students can get involved and like where they would go for this, you know? Sure, definitely, yeah. I mean, student government is just one of the clubs we have. We have over 50 clubs and organizations mm -hmm. on campus. Everything from other governance clubs, we have a student activities programming mm -hmm. board that puts a lot of the big programs on campus. We'll do a spring picnic every year, mm -hmm. the welcome bashes, you know, Halloween parties coming okay. up, you know, that kind of fun stuff. Then we have a newspaper, uh, um, award-winning, the Youngtown edition. Mm -hmm. We have an award-winning literary magazine called The Promethean. Uh, we have clubs that are just for fun, table tennis, chess club, you know, stuff like that, ultimate frisbee. Oh, we have wow. honor societies, you know, some with different majors. We have Phi Theta Kappa, which is just for any student at CCM. Mm -hmm. 
that has the high GPA. Okay. I'll say, is that a fraternity or? or yeah, like we don't have fraternity and hmm. sororities. Um, they're honor societies, okay. but they use the Greek letters okay. just like the fraternity mm -hmm. and sororities. Okay. Um, yeah, you have to have a certain GPA, pretty high GPA. Mm -hmm. You have to have been here for a certain period of time. Okay. The different honor societies have different requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're not easy to get into. Yeah, I was. Gonna, <laughs> it sounds like they're pretty difficult. And student government as well. It sounds like it's a very, it's a, a large workload, and but it seems like it's very rewarding because you seem to enjoy it. Absolutely. And you said you've been doing it for 17 years as well, so you seem to enjoy it as well and helping students out. And I think that's probably the most important thing at CCM is kind of having the faculty that is so helpful here, like as you said. <laughs> um, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about the, maybe some aspects that we, that we wouldn't know about student government that you take care of here at CCM? Sure, I think um, one of the real values of student government is that ability to shine a light on a problem. You know, the SGA can't pass a motion to change the financial aid policy yeah. at the yeah. campus. You know, that's not the power of the student government. But, you know, if there's a little issue, an example, a couple of years ago, the immunization holds. You know, students, you know, have to provide certain documentation mm -hmm. that they've gotten their immunization shots. And it's not due at when you register, it's due a, you know, a couple of semesters in. Mm -hmm. Um, but then when students don't do that, they get a hold placed on them, and now they oh, can't okay. register. Well, you go back, you know, a year and a half ago, two years ago, that hold was put on people's records right before they would go to register. Mm -hmm. So now they go to, you know, pick their classes on the computer, and they get a big red flag saying, no, you need to go take care of this. And now they're missing out on classes because mm -hmm. registration's open. Well, now that, you know, the SGA said, no, we don't like that. We'd like the hold to come out a little earlier mm -hmm. in the Health services were like, yeah, we can put that out, you know, two, three weeks beforehand. This way, it gives students time to get rid of that hold before the classes actually open up, and now they're not missing out on classes. So, that's where the student government can really make a difference for mm -hmm. students on campus by shining a light on an issue, and you know, hopefully, it gets resolved. Um, I know you said that you do you run some events here at CCM as well. For example, like the voting booth that uh, I just registered myself <laughs> recently this Good semester. Job. Yeah, um, <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about that? How you organize these and how students maybe if they're not a part of student government, how they would be able to help if they can. Yeah. Um, so definitely piggybacking off of what Don said, we we come up with the, these ideas to make student life better. And one of the ideas we came up with was voter registration mm -hmm. tables. With midterm elections coming up, we definitely wanted people, or students even, um, to just realize how important these elections mm -hmm. are and just just registering is that much of a difference. Right. Yeah. And then how the student government went about it was, you know, Emily appointed a chairperson mm -hmm. for the voter registration committee and that student then went out and recruited different groups on campus to sit volunteer at the table. Mm -hmm. um, some outside agencies wanted to come in, the Girl Scouts, the Women mm -hmm. Leagues. Um, well, voters came in on campus so they volunteered at the table. So there was a registration table, voter registration table on campus for the first two weeks in October mm -hmm. every single day. So it, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And how many did we get? Um, a little over 200 uh, registrations, yeah. Well, yeah. I was one of those, I just like to pour it out. <laughs> there we go. Um, I actually, I feel like specifically with elections uh, for college students, it's you don't, you don't really think about it as much. And then just seeing the voter registration tables here, I think that really got a lot more students involved. Because I saw lines at them for a couple of days mm -hmm. and yeah. it was a, uh, were there more than one also? I believe there's one in the library yeah, and yeah. then in the student center as well, correct? Correct, yes. yes. There's a held at multiple spots around mm -hmm. campus different days. Mm -hmm. And so you said and you said that um, when they were help, they needed people to help, they recruited people from other clubs to basically help out in those positions as well. Definitely. Yes. Um, okay. Um, all right. Well, um, now we will take a quick break. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Not all county college of Morris students look like me. Some look like me. Or me. Or me. Or me. We all come to CCM at different stages of life. And for different reasons. I plan to transfer to a university. I'm training for a new career as a nurse. But we all know one thing. CCM is where we want to be. So check out the website. Check out the website. Check out the website. And let CCM connect learning and your life. We are back on CCM All Access. I'm Daniel Barkov, and we are here with Don Phelps and Emily Herrera. 
So, um, I understand that um, the student government also participates in uh, some type of scholarships. Can you go over that with me a little bit? Um, yeah, so we have the... Um, um, it is the undocumented scholarship and the Student Government Association mm -hmm. scholarship. Okay. So money gets raised for that every mm -hmm. year. The student government usually contributes about $2,000 to keep those oh, scholarships wow. going for you know another year or so. Mm -hmm. And um, one goes to an un undocumented student to help defray their costs, and mm -hmm. another one goes to um, a student leader on campus. Okay. It's under $500 scholarships. Okay. Now, Emily, this is kind of a question for you. Um, now, being president, can you tell us about some of the perks of being in student government, if there are any, or the ones <laughs> that you can share? Well, there are a few. Um, one being president, and yeah. the other, um, I have my own parking spot okay. that I share with other student leaders, mm -hmm. um, as well as having our own office. Mm -hmm. SGA has uh, their own office downstairs underneath the student center mm -hmm. in room um SCC 127, yeah. yeah, um, and yeah, we, it's. <laughs> right, Emily's lucky enough, she's the only student leader with her own office. Yeah. All oh, the wow. other ones, the clubs share an office, yeah. but she gets her very <laughs> own office. That's a pretty big perk, if yeah. I do say so myself. Yeah. Um, now, also, um, I understand that there, a lot of the clubs, they get chartered through the, through the student government, correct? Correct. Um, uh, and there's some type of leadership training that's offered. Can you also go a little bit into that with me? Sure. Once a month, the interclub council meets, and that's through the Student Government mm -hmm. Association. So the different student leaders will come together. They'll get some training on a topic, mm -hmm. you know, how to run their meetings, how to market their events, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And then it's, the best part is the opportunity to share what's coming up. So we definitely encourage the clubs to partner on events. So mm -hmm. this way a club will say, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And another club will say, oh, we're thinking about that or we like that. And then they come together and they'll plan events together. Mm -hmm. And it just makes the events more successful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with, uh, with, with like fundraisers and stuff like that, does the student government do any type of work like that with the clubs as well? Like, uh, what, I'm, what I mean to ask is, do the, do the clubs have to go through the student government whenever they try to do any type of fundraising or any type of events? Now, that all happens through campus life. Through campus life. So that life. happens through my office. The student okay. government's role is in the chartering. Mm -hmm. So the student government says, yeah, we would like to have this club mm -hmm. at CCM and grants them the charter. Once they get the charter, then the club does everything through campus life. They can reserve spaces on campus, mm -hmm. they can market events, they can access funding. Okay, all right. Um, now, um, you have you said you've been here for 17 years, correct, Don? Yeah, it, correct. Can you, um, can you tell us a little bit more, I don't know when specifically student government was started here, but can you go over us maybe how it's changed through your time while you've been here? And then Emily, also how it's changed in the time that you've been here? Sure, the student government's been here as long as the college has, so for 50 okay. years, yeah, it's been here <laughs> since the beginning. You know, the founders of the college, when uh, they started, wanted to create an experience on campus that mirrored what you'd find on a four-year school mm -hmm. without the residence halls. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've done a pretty good job of offering a lot of opportunities. It's not on the scale you would find at a residential four-year school, but we have athletics, we have a newspaper, mm -hmm. we have a student government association, a bunch of different clubs and stuff. So get that opportunity. As far as the change, I think the biggest change I've seen while I've been here is that now every student works. You know, yeah. when I started a couple of, you know, half the students or a little more were working. Mm -hmm. Now it's very rare where I meet a student that's not working while they're going to school. Mm -hmm. And then the social media has just changed the way we market the events. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's just totally different. You know, you know we don't put posters on bulletin boards and that you was know, my next like <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, it still happens, but mm -hmm. that, that's not the case. The, so, the social media has just taken over, mm -hmm. which is great. Now, Emily, what about you? Have you seen any changes or anything that you've enjoyed or participating in and making better while, while, from, while, while you were secretary <laughs> and now president? Well, definitely noticing more of an, a social media impact with mm -hmm. the students. I see when a club posts something on the CCM Instagram, there's definitely a big turnout. Mm -hmm. um, even with the welcome bash being, um, it was moved to another, another date, and that even had a great, a great turnout. Yeah, the yeah. weather didn't cooperate with our <laughs> welcome bash in September, so we had to go to the rain date. And of course, we get nervous when an event gets moved. Yeah. And it worked out great. We had okay. hundreds of people there, which is 
just what we expected. Um, I know that last, I believe it was either last semester or semester before that, when they did the, the CCM Titan name change, was that anything to do with the student government or no? Uh, a little bit. A little it was bit? more the Student Activities Programming mm -hmm. Board, which is the programming end okay. of it. But yeah, they definitely the student government, you know, got to help get the word out yeah. about that. Because I saw that it. everywhere when it was on social media oh, yeah. and everything. And I don't, I don't really, I hate to say I don't follow CCM that much on social media, but the things that I did, I feel like I did see a lot of that. And a very, and I've been seeing a lot of uh, art promotion for shows, and I know there's a, some kind of dance show coming up as well. So I do see a lot of social media, as you were, as you were saying. Yeah, social media is definitely taken off at the college and yeah the naming of the titan yeah. titus was, <laughs> was a lot of fun definitely was um so can you go a little bit more in depth on how students can get involved uh with uh with the student government or even just clubs altogether? because i know there's a lot of there's a lot of stigma and it's a lot of it's a lot of i guess it's a mental gymnastics i guess for students specifically me i was kind of like that um, where it was, I would just come to CCM and I would just basically come here, I would do classes, and then I would just leave, and participation was sort of distant for me. And uh, I feel like after a few semesters of getting more and more involved, I, I see that there's a lot of benefits here, and I'd probably say more or on the same level as a lot of big schools. So can you, I know I just kind of made that question a little yeah, bit complicated, sure. but. Yeah, no, I, I think a lot of students, the majority of the students that come here have that stigma. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, you know, come here, I'm going to go to class yeah. and, and go right home. And we try to break that down. So we'll start an orientation and introduce them that, hey, yeah, we do have 50 plus clubs and there's lots of chances to get involved on campus. Mm -hmm. And then we have that welcome bash that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll have out on the plaza, all the clubs will be mm -hmm. there and the students can come by and do that. And then if they make their way over to the student center, over at the information window, we have information on when the clubs meet and we, we get them in touch with the club advisor. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of different ways to get involved. And then there's a website and mm -hmm. social media pages as well. What, what I always recommend if, is if someone's interested, pick one, two, or three clubs, go check them out, go to a mm -hmm. meeting, go to an event for each one, and then decide what you want to get involved with. Because you know, it's one thing to read about a club or you know see it on the web page, but to really experience mm -hmm. it, you got to meet the student leaders involved, yeah. and, and that, that'll help make your decision really easy on mm -hmm. who you connect with. Okay. Um, now, specifically with the workload in, uh, in student government, if somebody, if a student would want to get involved, it, do you find that it was, a, it was a hard transition for you getting into student government? Um, not a hard transition. Definitely had to get my um, mindset uh, shifted a bit on what priorities came first and mm. uh, what needed to be done in order for me to continue with school, work, and SGA. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely a smooth transition and I don't regret it. Yeah, yeah I think a, a lot of the students that get involved, they're, you know, they're forced to get good at time management. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, being a Problem. senator, yeah, yeah, being a yeah. senator on SGA, you're going to have a minimum of three one-hour meetings a month. Oh, wow. Okay. Plus whatever work you do outside of those meetings to get ready for them mm -hmm. or to talk about issues, that kind of stuff. If you're on the exec board, you can double that, mm -hmm. you know, so at least six hours of meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, you know, that's okay. The, you know, just attending the meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, we do help out. Another benefit we didn't talk about is the members of the student government get a $100 um, scholarship a year. Okay. You know, for you know, Sign just to, you know, to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to help defray. You know, mm. obviously they can't work and got to be at those meetings and yeah. stuff like that. So, okay, get to, and that's just for attendance. Mm -hmm. So the workload is manageable, is what you would say. What you would, yeah, say. yeah, okay. Because I, like I said, I know the biggest problem for me was definitely if I was to get into and in, involved with clubs was I guess the mentality and specifically with CCM when you're not on campus a lot of the time is mm -hmm. the. The idea of doing all the work, but then when you're not here, you know, it's kind of difficult, specifically for students who work. I mean, everybody might be better than me. I'm a big procrastinator, <laughs> so that's a, just my, my point of view on it. But um, um, so where can you see student government going in the next couple of years? Do you think there'll be a lot more advances, a lot more students signing up? I definitely hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see it growing and just getting the word out there getting people involved, I can see it becoming a lot more popular here at CCM and hopefully it does, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things we need to do better with student government is, is publicize those success stories of the student government. We don't do a great job of letting the student body know that the student government's there and there for them and, and when something great happens, 
letting mm -hmm. the campus community know about. I think some of those success stories, once they get out, students will feel empowered that, oh, we can make a difference here mm -hmm. and get involved and make even more changes. Yeah, and, and in all honesty, I wasn't even aware that we had, I mean, I figured that we did have a student government, but I didn't really know a lot about it. And now seeing how much stuff you, you guys obviously run here on campus, it's it's a really big workload, and especially for four people. So I would definitely want more people. I might even come down and get involved as well. <laughs> I might want to be president, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, all right, so um, can one more t one last time, can you tell us where students can go and how they can get involved with the, with the student government? Sure, they're gonna start at the information window mm -hmm. over in the student center. There's an application process process it's just a you know one page application mm -hmm. you know a couple of questions on why they want to get involved uh, if Emily will then meet with the student if Emily approves of the student then they meet before a nomination committee mm -hmm. that's like a job interview okay. you know make sure they understand what's involved with their role and they mm -hmm. have the time and that kind of stuff and once they get two-thirds of the nomination committee to give them the thumbs up then they get approved at a student mm -hmm. government meeting and they're off and running okay mm -hmm. all right well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, this has been another edition of CCML Access. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time.